make sure that we like how our rods fit. Remember we had to clean them up a little bit. We drilled a hole in it. Uh, we kind of relieved it the best we could, but there's still some slight imperfections on the edges and, and sorts. What I like to do, your mileage may vary, but I just clean off the journal that I'm going to put, put, place the rod on. This is the number one rod. And I'm going to set it up dry. Remember that the wrist pin goes towards the cam, so I'm just going to slide it on as it would go when it was happy, happy, happy. And I'll tighten this thing down and if it's like normal, um, the rods will probably make a little contact on the radius. This is a new scat crank. So the journals are probably what well, it seems how the crank was supposed to be made off of uh, the Ford drawing as far as bearing sizes. Uh, it'll probably be a little snug on the radius and just have to take a Babbitt knife and kind of clean it out so we don't have any contact. And as you can see, that's kind of stiff. So I'm just going to tighten it down wipe it back and forth here a time or two and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's it's dragging and so being since I have it on there dry it's going to shine up the Babbitt in the place of contact and like I said I think what we'll find is the contact is going to be in the radius. Uh, these are reconditioned rods I don't pour my own rods. I have my own reasons why I don't. Mainly because I get an engine and it might have a 625 gram rod and a 578. It's kind of hard to take that kind of weight out of a rod because there isn't a whole lot to work with. But if we look at this rod cap it's kind of marked up here just where they cut the radius. Uh, sometimes they cut these things just a little too snug for us. So I'm going to come in here and just drag my knife where that real shiny spot is and just get rid of it. shows up very well but right here in that radius is where it's really shiny there and here so I'm just cutting that out of the way the thrust is so you have the thrust is this surface the radius doesn't need doesn't come in contact with anything So let's see if I didn't make that happier. Again, we have our rods all indexed and marked, so we don't put the cap on backwards or we get the wrong cap on the wrong rod. You can sort through it if you happen to get them mixed up, but it just takes time. Still have a little bit of drag on it.
we know that the clearance that we want on this is according to the book is a thou and a half to two thousands I like to shoot for the thou and a half number and I'm really not seeing there it is right there I think it was more on the cap. So I know that the I know that it's fitting on there snug. It's too snug, too tight. I don't know what all the clearance is. I know I measured the rods before I took them apart and they were cut to the spec that I wanted, a thou and a half clearance. This uh, crankshaft is one inch two hundred and forty eight and a half thousandths. And so the rods with a thou and a half cut clearance would need to be cut to an inch and a quarter. There's a product that I like to use called Time Saver. Time Saver is a product that was developed a long time ago for fitting bearings. You can mix it up, it's a powder. Mix it up with a little lightweight oil. And just come in here and lather. Just kind of coat everything. I always like to put the rod in its location and in the direction it's going to work. And just put a little bit on the thrust edge and all the way around. This is uh, the same process that we did on the crankshaft, uh, on the mains. We cut everything really close and left a little material and just finished it up with the time saver in order to get it to where everything spun nice and free and easy. Uh, time saver is a grit. Uh, it's a material that doesn't embed into the uh, batten. Uh, if you read through the directions, it even tells you that you can fit it and call it quits and get on down the road and start running it. I like to go ahead and wash it all out, but you want to sneak up on it. I don't know if that's picking up on the sound, but you can hear kind of a little gritty sound. Don't just tighten the heck out of this or it'll just lock up on you. And I, when I'm doing this, I don't want to be pushing on the rod this way. I'm trying to just let it set on the journal and just force it back and forth. And like I said, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a little gritty sound to it where it's removing the material. Take care, don't let it dry out on you. This one I might have to lather back up. It seems like it's getting a little dry. I'll show you here in just a second what I'm talking about. We'll have to do that one again. Uh, time Saver also has the advantage of uh, it just flat quits cutting with a thou and a half clearance. Like I said, we had some little burrs and boogers from cleaning off the parting line and drilling the hole. And so basically we're just coming in here with a little material, just move, removing a little bit off of it. I'm going to kind of lather it back up one more time and we'll be done.
is it necessary? Oh, those rods probably would have got happy. I mean, you would have, first time you drove it, after you got, you know, a few miles per dawn, Babbitt will move around. It'll find its own place to be. <coughs> Torque on the bolts is 35 pounds. When we put it together for for the final fit, 35 pounds may not line up where the cotter key fits, so don't back it off. Just go ahead and snug it on down. It doesn't hurt. Uh, you're you're just stretching the bolt a little bit at that point in time. Reconditioned rods will always have new bolts in it, and I'd recommend if you're pouring your own rods that you would replace those bolts. Let's clean that one up and see what we got here. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to wipe a little. Right now I'm just using some transmission fluid. When I go to do the final assembly, we'll, put, we'll use some engine oil. There's all kinds of stuff. Break in this, break in that. And I find that 30 weight or 20 weight or whatever oil you're going to run in your engine works just as well. Some people like running uh, self-locking nuts, uh, which that's where you that's the camp you're in. Okay, fine, but don't use them while you're doing the fitting. Just use a regular nut. Uh, those air, aircraft nuts or self-locking nuts will. side play in it, thrust. There's no book I found yet that gives me what that clearance should be. It just says that if you can move it back and forth a little bit, it's fine. Well, I still got just a little bit, just a little high. I'll go ahead and take it apart and do one more round of time saver in there. That'll be happy. We can Real quickly though, before I do that, like I said, time saver quits cutting. We can just check with a little plastic gauge here. Uh, some people use plastic gauge. Some people like to use the paper. Uh, I think it's a receipt out of like a Walmart, you know, put it into where it locks and then add a shim back. Plastic gauge, if it's fresh, will give you a fairly good idea of where you're at. You check it with oil on it. Make sure that you have oil on the cap. Put my little piece of plastic gauge up here. Doesn't matter whether you check it where you check it.
just don't don't spin it after you <laughs> turned it on. I was. And it may not show up too good on the camera, but I've got just a fuzz under a thou and a half clearance. It isn't a thou, and it isn't quite a thou and a half. So I'm going to run one more little go around with some time saver on it and call it quits, and we'll just we'll do the same thing. Wipe off my plastic gauge and we'll do this one more little go around with the time saver and There's a great fit on a rod. That's what you're looking for. That's a thou and a half clearance. I got some side play in it. This away. Got the rod fit. We didn't install the dippers at this time. That'll be on the final assembly. So we'll just crank this old engine around here and we're going to do number two and number three and number four and when we're done we'll have all the rods. I wasn't too sure on that first cap. Remember we said we had some contact here where they've cut the radius on the rod versus the radius of the scat crank and wasn't too sure that we gave you a good picture of it. And you can see right here where the radius was cut. It's a little shinier right there. And continues on around. And the cap has some markings on it also. Right up, right out here on the very edge. And so that just needs to be relieved out of there with her our knife and we got just a little bit right in there so I've relieved those two areas so that's not an interference anymore and we'll go ahead and time save out number three.